So hello and welcome once again. Um, my name is Gildo Morno uh, with CDVI. I'm the technical training director and uh, we'll be talking about uh, the system features, uh, capacities and limitations and opportunities uh, that you have with the Atrium product. The current version that we will be talking about today is the uh, Atrium 4.2. Uh, and right uh, from the beginning, I, I like to point out that uh, all of you that are uh, registered and on the webinar here have access to our download pages uh, from the website and uh, cdvi.ca. And the uh, Atrium system, you can upgrade this system um, for free uh, by going to the download page in the Atrium section and uh, uploading uh, or downloading, I should say, the latest Atrium version and software and also firmware to be able to update your system. And this is uh, free of charge. Um, if you have a, an older system, you can update it for free to the current version. Um, however, I want to maybe, uh, without getting technical, if you have a version one atrium and you want to upgrade to the current 4.2, uh, it might be a good idea to email or contact our technical support and see if there are any certain processes that you need to uh, adhere to before upgrading the system. So in a nutshell, uh, firmware and software versions work together. So if you are gonna update the uh, software, kindly update the firmware version also. So the Atrium 4.2 system. It is an, a web-enabled access control system. Uh, in other words, any web-enabled uh, device such as a smartphone, a tablet, a computer, has access to the internet through any web browser, popular web browser, uh, you can access and manage the system, the Atrium system through this interface. So uh, a thin client, if you will. Um, so all standard browsers, um, what do you do in the uh, web interface? Is your daily uh, management of a, of a typical system, um, uh, locking and unlocking doors for people that forgot to um, forgot their card or a visitor that requests uh, access into the building. Uh, so you can connect to the system through the browser and uh, either unlock the door permanently or lock the door permanently or temporarily buzz someone in to unlock the door for five seconds and allow that uh, client to uh, enter the premises. Uh, managing your users, adding, deleting users, um, managing their access rights, um, denying them access, deleting them from the system or that kind of stuff. So your day-to-day -day, um, access control uh, and management of the system of cards in the system. Um, last but not least, uh, to view and even print out events through the web interface. So um, I can go to the door menu, uh, for example, and select the front door or the employee door and uh, click on the events tab in that menu for that door and see all the events uh, related to that door so I can find out if uh, Gildo has come in this morning and what time he arrived, so on and so forth. Um, the system is uh, capable of up to 500 doors. Um, I will be showing you the uh, architecture of the system and the layout and how we achieve 500 doors through uh, internet and RS-45 connections to the panels. Um, however, you'll probably uh, have most success or I uh, would say most commonly have requirements uh, from um, end users, clients that are looking for controlling anywhere from two to three doors up to 10, 15, 20, 30 doors. That's where most of your um, act, uh, access control, your atrium solutions will be provided. Uh, the system has a capacity of 500 doors. However, you can um, more often than not uh, uh, have a very um, aggressive price and uh, interesting uh, offering solution for your clients for anywhere from one, two, three doors, and typically up to 15, 20 doors, and so on and so forth. Um, the 500 doors, uh, the card database, uh, the user's cards, we uh, I use those interchangeably that uh, in the system there a user is associated to a card and the card is associated to a user. Uh, you have 10,000 uh, capacity, 10,000 card capacity in the system. 
uh, 1,000 access levels. These access levels permit you to uh, allow or deny access to individual doors in the building according to individual schedules if you want. So typically what you'll be doing with access levels is grouping uh, different departments, for example, with different groups of people in a condominium, the tenants, the uh, service, the maintenance, um, in a company, the administration, uh, accounting, uh, shipping, production. So these are access levels where different groups of people will have different access rights at different times to different doors in the building. Um, schedules, which are used uh, mainly in uh, with access levels. So you have up to 256 schedule, uh, 250 schedules, excuse me. These schedules allow us to permit and deny access to doors. Uh, you can also use schedules to automatically unlock and lock doors uh, according to a uh, business hours in a, uh, in a store, for example. Uh, you can also use these schedules to, um, uh, for example, on a different event, uh, different events in the system. Uh, during the, if the schedule is valid, when this event happens, uh, I will be able to activate a relay. So the other, uh, the other example would be uh, during the day, I don't want a, um, an annunciator or a, a horn to sound because we know that uh, this particular area will have uh, people going around and I want to monitor a motion sensor in that area. However, that same area at the evening or on weekends, if there is movement in that area, I want to monitor that area and have the system activate a relay. I can also use this. Uh, this is done according to a schedule. Um, I could also have, instead of activating a relay, sending the um, having the system send an email when the schedule is valid. So schedules are used uh, both for access rights, for unlocking doors, for activating, deactivating relays on certain conditions, events, and sending emails. Um, the last uh, item we see in this table is the event buffer. So when you connect to the controller or um, the events that we see in the menus uh, for the doors, for example, or the uh, users and so on and so forth, uh, these events are um, housed on the control panel, the A22, and displayed, if you're in the web interface, displayed on screen. In that uh, that screen where the event is displayed, you have a print button allowing you to print um, these events. Um, when we connect with the Atrium software, the free software, those events are not only displayed on screen, um, but they are also housed or stored and saved on the computer's hard drive. So when you are not connected to the system, the uh, events that are happening, a card swipe, doors opening, uh, there are any alarms and so on and so forth, these events are stored on an event buffer on each control panel. That event buffer contains up to 25,000 events. When the event buffer becomes full, which of course at one point this will happen, the event, the oldest event will be pushed out by the newest event. We do first in, first out with FIFO. So, um, we push out the oldest event to make room for the newest event. The Atrium system, um, what we have on screen here is a um, system architecture of 100 doors. And um, these, these systems, uh, we have with the Atrium system up to 50 control panels that can be connected directly to the network. And each atrium control panel, the A22, can accommodate two readers or two doors. So we can have 50 A22s connected to the network, and each one will accommodate two doors for a total of 100 doors. Now, each of these 50 A22 control panels have the capacity to connect four additional A22s set as expanders, so door expanders. When the A22 is set as a door expander, and that's done by simply changing a jumper on the control panel from the uh, default setting of controller, change the jumper to expander. That expander will now be connected to a control panel through an RS-45 bus with a category five cable. That RS-45 bus can be up to 4,000 feet long or 1,220 meters. The um, A22, um, Control panel that's connected to the network has the capacity of um, connecting four A22s set as expanders for a total of 10 doors.
per A22. So this is why we're seeing in this architecture, we have a control panel here that's connected to the network through the router or through the, uh, the network switch. And this panel can accommodate up to four A22 set as door expanders. So each door expander or A22 per se can accommodate two doors. So we can have up to 10 doors connected through one IP address. And since we can have 50 IP addresses, we can do 500 doors. We can, uh, this is a very uh, popular question and um, important question that a lot of end users or clients uh, request for their access system, is to be able to uh, connect to the system remotely. So if you're not at the office, you're not connected to the local area network, I want to be able to uh, have the capability to connect and maybe unlock a door remotely or uh, delete a card or add a card in the system. Uh, this can be done with the Atrium system. As we see here, the, the generic um, diagram here. So going through the internet and connecting to the Atrium A22 um, remotely. Uh, this is done, uh, if you've ever done camera systems and uh, this is a common request for cameras also to be able to remote in and see their cameras. It's the same concept that we use with the Atrium system as, to, as a camera system uses. So um, what we do is we, um, in the modem router at the building, uh, you will set up a dynamic DNS um, account with a DNS, a DIN DNS provider that we see at the top here. And the whole concept is because of the uh, modem or ISP provider, your network uh, internet provider at the building, they use DHCP uh, to change the IP addresses that is given to your modem router in your building. And this is a regular occurrence. It could be every day, it could be every week, could be a couple times a month, for example. So I want to know how to connect what the IP address is to connect to my system. Um, the dynamic DNS server, the domain, domain name system up here, this is a uh, service provided on the internet. And you can search uh, one that's a very common, a very popular is dindns.com, dyndns.com. And uh, you can create an account with them. And that service will synchronize with the modem router at your building. So if ever the ISP does change the IP address of your modem router at the office, the DNS service will update, will be synchronized. Always be aware of what the new IP address is. So when you're remote through the internet, you connect to the internet, you will type in a, um, uh, a host name or a URL, like for example, myatriumsystem.com. So instead of putting in an IP address like 192.168.1.1 to connect to your network, uh, you will be connecting to myatriumsystem.com, for example. And that is the account that you've created with DNS, dns.com. And they will then connect you to your modem router at the office and in the router itself you will do port forwarding to the IP address, the local IP address of your control panel. Uh, we do have a step-by-step -step guide that explains how this is done. Um, this is uh, pretty straightforward once you uh, have done it uh, going through the guide and you will be able to uh, offer this, um, this service to your clients with the Atrium system. Uh, camera integration. Um, we do some basic uh, camera integration, and uh, I want to stress the word basic. Uh, we, with the Atrium system, the whole concept is connecting through the web browser. I can go to the door menu, select my door, and view the person that's located at the door to see uh, who it is and to, uh, uh, for example, unlock the door if they are. Uh, uh, they are allowed to come in because they are a visitor, we're expecting them and so on and so forth. Uh, so the, we, we use IP cameras um, to do that. Um, you can have your, your video management system, your VMS, and have that do all the recording. And if you want to pan, tilt, zoom, if you have that type of camera in the, in the building, uh, use that to do this. Uh, however, with the Atrium system, what we are doing is simply to view the live streaming video to ascertain who's at the door, 
before we buzz them in. That's the basic idea. Uh, with the Atrium system through the Atrium interface, I do not have the capability to uh, take a snapshot. Uh, Atrium does not have the capability to record video, uh, for example. Uh, these are things that you know you will need to uh, implement with your uh, video management system, your NVR. Uh, however, we can, up to a certain level, integrate within the uh, system with the VMS or the NVR, provided that the camera or that uh, VMS has an input. So we can trigger, for example, an alarm condition in the Atrium system, trigger an output, a relay, and connect that to the camera system and have the camera system, when it senses that the relay has been triggered, do some recording. So there is a capability to integrate up to a certain level with um, existing camera systems. However, within the Atrium menus and configuration options, the, uh, it is limited to viewing a live streaming video. Uh, with that said, uh, we will be moving forward with that. This is our first, um, at CDVI, our first uh, step into integration with cameras. It's very basic as we see. Uh, however, uh, we've already processed up to a certain limitation um, with VivoTech, the capability of doing some uh, video recording. Um, if you do need to uh, implement that option within Atrium, uh, VivoTech cameras, IP cameras, uh, you will be able to do that provided they have a, an onboard SD card within the camera. The, uh, the concept is not to replace the video or the NVR with Atrium. It's simply to, in addition to the video or VMS system, we also have the capability to Atrium to uh, connect to and uh, send record commands to a VivoTech IP camera. Since the controller uh, with four uh, uh, A22 expanders, door expanders, has a capability of 10 doors, uh, we can put up to 10 cameras on that uh, controller to associate one to each door. However, uh, alternatively, if you want, you could put uh, two cameras on one door, interior and exterior of the door, for example. If you do that, uh, you will be limited still to 10 cameras. So if you're doing two cameras per door, you'll be able to do five doors. Um, when you connect uh, through the web interface, uh, this is the Atrium interface, if you haven't seen it before. Uh, when we go to the door menu, this is what's uh, selected here, and we're seeing the front entry and the employee door. There are two doors in this system. Um, the front entry has a camera associated to it. By clicking on the padlock, left click on the padlock, or tap on that, uh, that icon, you'll have a drop down menu that we see appear here. Now, this is where we can lock and unlock doors permanently, uh, grant access to buzz someone in to uh, reset the door to its, its uh, settings, its configuration settings. And last but not least, the camera view. So we see here a VivoTech CC8370HV. Uh, that's one of the cameras that we use to uh, do the, uh, the uh, testing with. And when you click on the camera selection, this window will pop up. You will be able to see the live streaming video from that camera. And we have the up option here uh, to grant access, so allow a person in if you, uh, you desire. So that's the integration option that we have for cameras, uh, IP cameras at this point. Uh, we also provide uh, alarm integration or intrusion integration. Um, any alarm system that has the, uh, an option for key switch arming, um, we can integrate with. So um, you will be able to, through a smartphone, of course, tablet or computer, any web-enabled device, um, arm and disarm the alarm system. And you can choose who can do this or not do this. So you can select certain people that will be able to arm, uh, certain people that will only be able to disarm, and other people that can do arm and disarm. And all the, most of the people do not have either capability. Uh, you can also, uh, through both the web interface and the Atrium software, view and monitor the status of your alarm system. Is it armed or disarmed? Uh, if it is armed, is there an alarm going on? And so on and so forth. And um, last but not least, uh, through the computer software or the web interface, uh, I can connect to the system and manually arm or disarm the alarm system remotely. 
Um, so it, it simplifies uh, many of the uh, issues, or one of the issues, I should say, that is uh, common um, with a lot of end users that purchasing a building that already had an existing alarm system, uh, change of employees in the, in the uh, company, uh, the old employee, uh, we want to change the, um, the, uh, the code to arm and disarm the alarm system. We forgot what the code of the system is to arm and disarm. Uh, this becomes tedious and uh, not always convenient to manage. Uh, and what they would like to do, and the, pro the solution we're providing is with a simple dual card swipe at a uh, reader. So you pass your card twice at the reader on the exterior of the door, and that will send a signal to the alarm system to arm or disarm. Uh, so the dual card swipe will arm the system, and a single card swipe will disarm the system. Um, and we can pick and choose which cards have this option, okay? Uh, in addition to that, uh, one thing that's not mentioned in this little screen here, um, when um, the system is armed and uh, the reader itself uh, on the building um, will be uh, flashing red and having a little, uh, it'll flash red about once every three to five seconds, indicating that the system is armed. and if I, for example, um, have the arming and disarming capability, I'm the owner of the building, I left the building last night and armed the alarm system by double swiping my card. Now the building is armed. Uh, the following morning, um, my employees are at the uh, office and I have yet to arrive. I'm stuck in traffic or for whatever reason. Typically, the employees would have access, let's say, for example, starting at 8 o'clock in the morning. It is now 8.05 and um, the system if the employees, the cards, do not have disarming rights, the, um, the system will deny access to the doors, even if they have normal access rights, permitting them access from eight o'clock in the morning. So if the system is not disarmed, we will prevent false alarm triggers by having an employee enter the building when the system is still armed. So the atrium system will override the access rights and deny access to the door if they do not have disarming rights within the system. So that makes it uh, quite convenient, prevents false alarms from happening. Um, more integration, uh, Allegion uh, Schlage integration, as we see here, the NDE and LDE lock sets. Uh, we also are compatible and uh, have integrated the uh, legacy. Uh, Schlage handles the AD series, the AD 300 and AD 400s. Uh, and um, uh, we, 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 are, we provide this integration as a solution for uh, users that have these locks and want to centrally manage the system uh, instead of going to each door, for example, and adding a card in the, uh, the door uh, by swiping cards at the actual door itself on these handles. Um, we can connect to the system through the atrium system and have uh, add the card once and uh, upload that to each handle individually in one swipe, uh, in one uh, process, if you will. So um, we can connect to it. And um, Schlage uh, has uh, several, uh, I think what they call them, uh, alliance partners um, and that, you know, other access control manufacturers that provide this type of integration. Um, However, if you are uh, you know, looking to uh, provide a quote for this, uh, the Atrium solution that has this uh, capability, our Atrium system, is the most cost effective among all the Alliance partners. Uh, typically, they are high-end high uh, access control systems or medium to high-end access control systems and the pricing and uh, yearly licensing and so on and so forth uh, with Atrium. Um, we can uh, offer the same kind of integration with these handles at a very cost-effective price. So you will have a definite advantage if you are in a, uh, uh, with your quote compared to other competition out there. Um, elevator integration. So we do floor, uh, floor control with Atrium and we can control up to 64 floors in one elevator cab. Um, any A22 can be converted into an elevator controller by uploading 
uh, free firmware into the A22. So it will become, instead of an A22 door controller with the elevator firmware that you have on the CD that we provide and also that you can download uh, from our website, we have free A22 EC for elevator control firmware that you can upload into the uh, A22 to convert it to a elevator controller. Uh, and the, the whole concept here is within the elevator cab, inside the cab is where you'll have your access control reader. And when I swipe my card, depending on which floor I have access to, the uh, buttons that, are, that I have access to, only those buttons will be available to me. Um, we can do up to, if I move forward here, okay, before moving to the email, uh, just to finalize the elevator, uh, we can do up to 64 floors per cab. And since one A22 can accommodate two readers, we could do two cabs per A22. And if we're doing 64 floors on each cab, we will now have 128 floors, 64 times two. Overall, the atrium can accommodate up to 256 floors. Um, however, there are, um, I'd say, there are many, many more buildings that are from uh, four, five, six uh, to 10 to 20 floors compared to buildings that are 64 floor buildings. So the idea here is the overall capacity of the atrium can be to accommodate up to, to control up to 256 floors. If I have, for example, a building that has eight floors, I can do eight floors times two readers or times two cabs up to 256 floors total. So I can split the amount of floors, even if I only have, uh, I have, I have multiple cabs, provided I don't exceed the overall total of 256 floors. Uh, email integration, um, I mentioned it a bit uh, at the beginning. Any system event uh, can be used as a trigger to uh, send an email. It is the A22 control panel that sends an email. You do not need a computer that's running uh, with Atrium on the background to be able to send the email as it's the actual A22 controller. So you will configure within the controller menu itself in the um, Atrium software, what is the SMTP address and connection details, username and password for your email account. So you can use Gmail, Yahoo, uh, your own personal uh, network email uh, account and have Atrium use that account to send an email on emergency scenarios, on alarm conditions, on a certain specific user that has access to doors, has been denied access to doors and so on and so forth. Any system event, such as door forced open, uh, access granted, access denied, uh, per user, all users, some users, we can use these as uh, trigger elements to send an email. For uh, maintenance and servicing uh, for your clients, you can have the system, some of the events that the, gener the system generates is, uh, for example, low battery. There is a 12 volt, seven amp hour battery backup uh, and housed within the panel, the, the, um, the, um, the container that where we put the controller in the box. And uh, if that, um, if that uh, battery um, fails or it goes low, we can use that, that will generate a low battery event. We can use that to fire off an email to the service technician to replace the battery. Um, module communication failure. So if there is a disconnect between, for example, one of the control panels that's on the network and the system, we can use that as a trigger element to have that control panel fire off an email, uh, the expanders and so on and so forth. So you can use this as a service uh, tool to provide uh, elevated service levels to your client uh, by being advised uh, that the system has uh, alarm conditions, uh, restored conditions, uh, card access uh, issues, and so on and so forth. Uh, Atrium 4.2, some of the new features that we've added. We released Atrium 4.2, um, I think it was in mid-April. Um, and uh, these are the current uh, features that we've added, the new features that we've added, I should say. Uh, I think the most um, 
important, if you will, is the lockdown, uh, the emergency lockdown capability. Uh, we are also able now through the uh, through a card uh, menu or card file, I should say, be able to uh, import and export the user database, the card database. And uh, convenience that we've added in the uh, web interface, as we see at the bottom of the screen here, is uh, when we generate or swipe a card that is not in the system, that card will generate an access denied event, as we see in the green box over at the bottom left here. The card will have an a card unknown and the event will be a card unknown event and when it's a access denied card unknown you'll find that now we have an add button allowing us to be able to add this card in the system and associate the card to a user in the system by simply swiping the card at a reader uh, not knowing what the card number is it's an old card and so on and so forth this can uh, simplify the task for your end user swipe the card at a reader go to the system um, you can have your smartphone with you uh, connect to the system through your smartphone, see the event that has generated, click on the add button and add that user very simply, very quickly. Uh, the user card import export uh, uh, from uh, human resources uh, programs, uh, existing uh, legacy access control systems that have the capability to export the card database, the user database. Um, we support any system that will be able to provide us with the file formats that we see here. Uh, CSV, um, comma separated values or character separated values. So the CSV format, very popular. Uh, XL format, XML, and as we see also text files. Uh, we do have uh, provide uh, in, as we see here, this uh, Explorer of the uh, of the computer, uh, Windows Explorer, in the program files x86, in the CDVI group Atrium, there is a folder there called Atrium to Import Templates, and there are several sample files there that will give you the uh, mapping of the type of file that Atrium uh, will need. You will need to respect for Atrium to properly import it into the Atrium database. Uh, for example which field is the uh, card number, which field is the facility code, which field is the first name, which field is the last name, these type of things. How do I need to configure or set up the file, in which field represents what information when I import it into, into Atrium to make sure that uh, the Atrium system properly uh, puts the information in the right uh, fields within the system. Um, the, I think the most um, advanced option that we've added is the lockdown uh, crisis management here. So we'll be able to initiate and lock down a building um, with the Atrium system uh, through a uh, different uh, avenues. Um, and we will also be able to manage in real time the system. So we will have, for example, a security, uh, um, security uh, guardhouse that will be able to watch the system as the uh, SWAT team goes through the building to evacuate the building and uh, catch the perpetrator, the, the shooter in the building. So how do we, uh, how does Atrium accommodate this uh, type of solution? Uh, you can uh, initiate or start or stop the lockdown with cards as we see here. You can do it through the software or browser, uh, the web browser or through the Atrium software and you can use buttons. Uh, emergency buttons located, for example, if we take a, a school, which is uh, uh, schools and churches are very keen on these type of solutions right now, unfortunately, but um, it is uh, that that is the case at this point. So cards, we can pick and choose uh, which cards have this capability to both start and stop or do both. Um, you can also uh, request if you are using cards, is it a single swipe at a particular reader? Is it a single swipe at any reader? Is it a double swipe at any reader or a single reader? Uh, do you need to have two people to be able to? You will need two cards. So single or double swipe or with chaperone options. And you can pick and choose which cards um, have this, uh, this uh, capability. So if you do uh, pick certain cards and will they need to double swipe their cards uh, to be able to initiate lockdown or stop the lockdown? Will they need to, when they stop uh, the lockdown, have a, a second card or a second person with them and so on and so forth. 
through the uh, Atrium software or the web browser. Um, you will be able to, uh, as we see here, activate and deactivate or start and stop the lockdown uh, scenario. Um, we can also uh, implement that when you're in the web browser and you start the lockdown, you will need, or stop the lockdown for that matter, you will need to also provide your login password. So if you uh, want to start or stop the lockdown, you must have the password that you use to log into the system to initiate those two options. Or you can say, no, if you've logged in, um, you do not need your password. You just start or stop the lockdown by simply tapping. And you can choose which one. So you, know, you can say, you do not need a password to start the lockdown, but you do need a password to stop the lockdown. Uh, through emergency buttons um, at the principal's office at the reception area and uh, the hallways in each classroom so we can accommodate uh, emergency buttons and I think that will be the most uh, common option for many places is we have uh, buttons located throughout the building and if you press this button we will start the uh, lockdown condition or stop the lockdown condition. Um, if we're using cards uh, we've uh, provided uh, a new part number if you will uh, it's the uh, as we see here on screen, uh, the LD kit, and they are uh, cards uh, that are pre-printed with these graphics on them, and they are used uh, to be able to uh, manage and uh, detect the lockdown, start and stop the lockdown. So uh, from left top, uh, we see start lockdown, and the red one with the red header, uh, this just over to the right at the top of the screen. The second card that we see there is the orange card, the grant access and maintain lockdown. And I'll explain what that is in just a moment. Uh, bottom left, the yellow card is the area secure. And last but not least at the bottom right, the uh, end lockdown card. So the start and end lockdowns are pretty straightforward. And as I mentioned a moment ago, you can uh, require that you need uh, to double swipe a card at certain readers and so on, so forth. Um, by default, uh, all the doors in the system are included in lockdown. So when I start a lockdown scenario, all the doors in the building will lock and all the cards will stop working except for these special cards. And this is done in configuration in the card menu, in the user menu, which cards and which users have the capacity to start and stop lockdown. Um, and then once we are in lockdown, situation crisis. Uh, we have the orange and the yellow card that are available to us and this typically will be issued to the emergency response team, the SWAT team. As they go in the building, so the doors, uh, the system has been put into lockdown, all the doors are locked, so if they were unlocked by schedule and so on and so forth, we override that, the emergency is initiated, we are now in lockdown, all the doors in the building have locked. Uh, all the cards except these special cards or special cards that we've indicated will now be refused access. If you don't have a grant access option in your card menu, you will not be able to access the door anymore or any door in the building. So typically the only people that will be able to access the door so are the people from the emergency response. Um, these cards here uh, can be purchased and to simplify uh, which cards do what and so on and so forth. But with that said, any card can be a lockdown card. It does not have to be one of these. Uh, a uh, regular card can be, it's an option that we, uh, um, an attribute that we enable within the card menu for that particular user, that particular card. So these cards are just more convenient, more user-friendly, if you will. However, any card can be used to initiate, stop, or manage lockdown. So we have start and end lockdown. Then we have grant access and maintain lockdown. So the scenario with this card here, this option, is that we are now in lockdown, all the doors are locked, uh, the classrooms and the kids are in the classrooms and the emergency response team will be evacuating these classrooms as they go through the building. Uh, so we need the emergency uh, response team to permit them access to the classroom and one at a time, for example. So anybody that has this grant access and the option is enabled will be able to override the lockdown at that at each door in the building. When they have that, they swipe their card, the door will unlock, allowing them to enter the classroom and evacuate the children from the classroom 
And then we would use the yellow card to secure that classroom, area secure, and maintain the lockdown. During the lockdown, the readers will be flashing. So when I initiate the lockdown, by default, the CDBI readers in normal day-to-day -day activity, they are blue. So you look at the reader on the wall, the reader has a blue LED, you see that reader. Uh, when we initiate lockdown, uh, the readers will start blinking very quickly in lockdown mode, blue and red. So the reader will change status. You will be able to view uh, by just simply looking at the door if there is a lockdown initiated. Of course, we can have sirens activate and we can do emails and so on and so forth, but at the reader level, they do start blinking very quickly, red and blue. Uh, when I swipe my card and this grant access card, I access that door, I evacuate the room, and then I swipe the yellow card, the area secure. This will indicate within the system that this room has now been secured and the reader will now start blinking blue and green. So instead of blue and red. So as I'm walking down the hallway to, to these classrooms, I can, in the, I can see visually which rooms have been cleared or secured and which are still need to be evacuated. We can also initiate lockdown, as I, as I mentioned a bit earlier, through the web interface and also the PC software. And if we want, we can also through the web or PC software interface uh, lock and uh, uh, unlock doors uh, to allow the emergency uh, response team access to the door. So within the software and the web browser, I can, for example, here in the web browser, I can go to the door menu and click on the padlock for that door and permit access to the uh, room. And here we are in the area. So this is, would be classroom one, classroom two, classroom three. We have a list of five classrooms here, or five doors, in other words. Uh, by clicking on the padlock, since I'm in the area menu, I will be able to secure the area. So instead of using cards, we're using the web or software interface to be able to manage the crisis in real time. Here we see in the software, this is a screen capture, we have the lockdown uh, initiated and we're seeing the list of doors right here in the building. So these would be your classrooms and we're seeing that they are in lockdown and we can click on the door and uh, clear the area uh, to secure that because the uh, room has been cleared and so on and so forth. So the lockdown option is a, uh, in addition to what we just explained, or what I just explained, uh, any uh, event for the lockdown, starting and stopping lockdowns, I can use that as we saw before with uh, the emails or the macro commands. We can uh, create a macro command which would trigger a relay on the A22 control panel and uh, connect that relay to a uh, public announcement system within the building uh, that will play a audio file or activate, um, for example, if instead of a with under the uh, PA system, I can trigger a secondary relay and say connect this to an alarm panel and have the alarm panel uh, send out a, uh, a, um, a SIA code or uh, contact ID code to the central monitoring station to uh, call the emergency response team, so on and so forth. In addition to that, so we can activate dry contact relays on the panel and integra integrate that with other systems. Uh, we can also fire off an email to three individual email addresses through the email option of the system. So total uh, solution and management of your uh, lockdown crisis with the ATM system. And this is part of the system. There is no module that you need to purchase to activate this option. The ATM product provides this uh, from the get-go. Uh, what we're seeing here on screen, uh, the kits that we have available for you, these are two and there are many other kits, uh, several other kits I should say that are available for you. For example, if you uh, want to have uh, CDBI, we do provide um, some very nice um, stainless steel card readers. So if you're in a uh, school environment, um, these polycarbonate readers, uh, uh, they are susceptible to flame. So you might want to uh, have a stainless steel reader because of a high vandalism area. Um, there is a kit for that. Uh, these two kits here and all the kits that we are, have available 
include, of course, the metal housing. And within the metal housing, the box, the biometal container, there is a power supply included. You do not need to purchase an external power supply. Um, and all you have to do is to plug this into an AC outlet on the wall, and you will be able to provide power to both your control panel, your readers. Uh, if you're using motion sensors for your request to exits, uh, you will also be able to provide power for your lock devices. Uh, the Atrium A22 can provide up uh, 20, excuse me, uh, the lock output on the A22 is a 12 volt DC 750 milliamp output per door. So there are two doors, two readers. Each lock output provides 12 volts uh, DC 750 milliamps. And it can be normally open or normally closed, so door strikes or MAC locks. Uh, so the metal housing, the power supply included. The, of course, the control panel. Here we see two nano readers. This is the A22 kit B. These are small readers. They're about uh, two inches. Uh, that would be 10 millimeters, uh, excuse me, five millimeters, excuse, five centimeters uh, wide and about uh, three inches high. And that'd be about uh, 10, millimeter, 10 centimeters high. Um, five, uh, we have 15 credentials. There are five clamshell card, standard credit card size cards. Um, we have five key tags and also five disc tags that are provided with the kit. These disc tags are about the size of a US dime, a coin, a uh, small coin and uh, about a millimeter, two millimeters thick. And they have a sticky back. Um, what we usually see these uh, disc tags is what the part number is or the name of these tags are. Um, they're usually uh, uh, put on the back of a cell phone and um, you use this little disc tag as your proximity uh, credential to present it to the reader itself. So you have 15 credentials. Uh, you also have the uh, master and programming cards. These two cards come with the control panel. Uh, they allow us, uh, as we saw a bit earlier, a new feature, we can swipe a card at a reader and go to the event in the web browser and click the add button. Um, very simple. We also have the uh, master and programming cards that allow us to uh, do the same thing, but in uh, without having to connect to the system, which is a very nice option. Uh, use the master card and swipe the card at the reader. That's the blue card that we see on screen. And within five seconds, we'll present the programming card, the red card that we see there. When we do this, this initiates the and card enrollment mode uh, for Atrium. So the reader at that point, so I present the blue card, the master, and present the red card within five seconds. The reader that I've just done this will start blinking twice red and twice green. I've now activated enrollment mode. By doing that, I can now present a card that is not in the system, and we will enroll that card automatically into the user database. And we can add multiple cards that way. And when we're done, we'll present the red card back to the reader to stop the enroll enrollment mode. The reader will go back to its normal blue in uh, blue status. The cards that we've just added are now active in the system and could gain access to all the doors 24 seven. So very convenient, very simple. So these cards come with the product. And of course, last but not least, you have the uh, software. Uh, what we see on screen here is a DVD or CD-ROM. Uh, we are now um, shipping uh, USB keys, so uh, many laptops uh, and many computers for that matter, even desktop computers, no longer have uh, CD or DVD drives. So uh, we are now shipping the software uh, through uh, our channels uh, with a USB key. Uh, and last but not least, at the bottom, uh, we see we also have a PoE Plus solution. So um, we use the uh, PoE uh, Plus network uh, to provide power both to the um, control panel and uh, the um, readers and door strikes. Uh, please keep in mind, if you are going to use the PoE Plus, the PoE Plus um, standard does not provide enough wattage or enough power to drive the lock outputs with mag locks connected to it. So you can use the PoE Plus with door strikes. However, if you're going to be using mag locks, uh, you will need an external power supply for your mag lock because the PoE Plus does not provide enough power for that, uh, that, that requirement of a typical mag lock. Um, 
the markets where uh, we have uh, success, these are typical markets that you can approach and where you will be approached by. So condominium complexes, uh, schools and school boards, uh, daycare centers, um, fitness um, gyms, uh, convenience stores, uh, churches, um, and of course, small to medium businesses. Uh, these are the key places where uh, you can provide them with an access control solution at a price point that uh, will uh, allow you to generate a uh, fair amount of business and profit margin, of course. Um, so these are areas that you can develop um, through uh, the, uh, the, we can provide a solution through the Atrium system for. All our products are um, guaranteed for five years so the control panel uh, the readers and so on and so forth if you do have an issue with our product uh, return it to your distributor and we will replace that product uh, within the five-year period free of charge so that uh, covers the uh, material um, that i want to show you here today thank you and goodbye